defense so far this ball game. Two away, bottom half of the fourth, bringing to bat Mike Bird, who doubled in right center field uh, to the fence in the second inning for the first hit for Springs Valley. Mike Bird with the big number 12 on his back. Mike Bird is the third baseman. He has moved to second base. He takes a cut at the first pitch for strike one. Missing. Two away. Bottom half of the fourth. Jasper leading three to one. Bottom of the fourth. Two away and Jeff Hoaxong working on a two hitter. He fires and uh, Bird fouls it back for strike two. Two strikes on the banner, two outs, bottom of the fourth inning. That pitch was low and in the dirt for ball one. A wasted pitch by Jeff Hoaxong, the pitcher for Jasper. Uh, he is a sophomore, isn't he, uh, Jerry, Jeff Hoaxong? So uh, Jasper has some outstanding prospects. As he fires a nice curveball, he swings, he misses. The catcher dropped the ball, and he runs over and tags the batter for the third out. Is to bring local viewers on the cable some special entertainment. We've been informed that this fall, uh, CBS will be introducing a late-night show similar to the Johnny Carson show or the Joy Bishop show. And uh, consequently, as far as late movies are concerned, they will be completely knocked out of the picture, except on your independent stations. And uh, the present shortage of movies is uh, resulting in a cut down as far as the network weeknight movies are concerned. So we have purchased 150 movies from Medallion TV movie series, and uh, we're starting to present them for you here on TV9. In addition, of course, we have the color cartoons featured daily on Hey Kids. Next week, to keep you informed as to what's coming up, we have uh, another group of four outstanding movies with some top names in the movie industry. But before we talk about what's coming up next week, we'd like to mention some of the others that'll be coming up in the coming weeks. And I think it might be interesting to mention the year on some of these. Uh, one of the movies coming in is The Fabulous Fraud, which is in color. It stars Christine Kaufman and Tully Marino, and it's a 1960 movie. Another is 48 Hours to Live with Anthony Steele and Ingemar Johansson. That's from 1963. Uh, another movie, The Shortest Day with Walter Pigeon, Stuart Granger, and Steve Reeves. That's a 1963 movie. Actors and Sin, Edward G. Robinson, Eddie Albert, Marsha Hunt. Bill Bendix, for you Bill Bendix fans, will star along with Dennis O'Keefe in Cover Up. Hellgate, starring Warren, uh, Ward Bond, Sterling Hayden, Joan Leslie. And Summer Storm, starring Linda Darnell, Anna Lee, George Sanders. You recognize all those names. And uh, these are all movies that will be coming up in the future weeks on the TV9 movie. Included in the package are a number of outstanding foreign movies, some of which uh, are made in English. Some of them are dubbed into English. But uh, from what we have seen so far, some of these movies are outstanding presentations by foreign moving companies. Many of them have not been seen in this area, and we're very happy to present them to you. Right now, we might mention that uh, in a, the times for the movies, TV9 movie is featured each day at 5.30 p.m. and again at 8 p.m. And on weekends, we introduce the TV9 Night Owl Theater that comes on at 1 a.m. on Saturday night and features two feature-length movies for your late-night viewing pleasure. And we've heard from babysitters and late-nighters who uh, certainly appreciate being able to watch these movies into the wee hours, and uh, we hope to continue, it, continue with it for you in the coming months. Next week's lineup of movies features uh, some other familiar names. Uh, Sonny Tufts is featured in one of the movies next week called Serpent Island. And uh, I'm sure that's one that many of you will want to see. Sonny Tufts, Tom Monroe, and Serpent Island. John Ireland, one of uh, Hollywood's finest names, is featured in a movie next week that's called No Time to Kill. And uh, 
for you Western fans, we have a, one Western that we feature each week, and I know a lot of people are uh, happy with that. And these include such great names as Tex O'Brien and Buster Crab and George Houston, Fuzzy St. John. And we like to work in one of the good old Western movies like we used to watch as youngsters down at the Tivoli. And uh, we're bringing them back here on TV9 for your enjoyment. Hey kids, it's time now for Hey Kids with Uncle Al, Spunky, and Tadpole. And now, here's Uncle Al. Well, hello everybody, and welcome once again to our show. And kitties, we're over here on this camera, right over here, so you youngsters can look right over there. And you see we've got quite a crew here today. We've got some most exciting youngsters, and we'll get a chance to meet those. And I'm going to pull a little... Now, what you would call magic trick on you today, but I got a little trick. I, Mr. Bird says he thinks he can figure it out. I don't really think he can. And uh, maybe some of you youngsters at home think you can figure it out, so you be sure to watch. We'll have that coming up for you in a little bit. I got a couple of good contests for you today, so I want you youngsters to clean out your ears and knock a little sawdust out of the head so that you can possibly answer our questions to get some free ICs that we give away down here from the PDQ in Jasper. So before we start any contest, let's go right down the line and find out who our youngsters are that we have with us today. And we'll start way over here on my left, Chuck. Okay. And right down here, we'll let this little girl give us her name right here. Ginger Eckstein. Ginger Eckstein. Okay, Ginger. And Ginger, you've got four members of your family with us today, including yourself, right? Yes. And uh, how many people are in your family? Eleven. Eleven? Uh, how many children? Ten ki kids and... I see. And uh, it's quite a family, real nice kids, too. And I understand that uh, one of our winners that we had with us the other day in one of our contests with us today, is that right? Yes. Which one is it? Mickey. Mickey. Okay, Mickey was our winner, huh? Okay, Ginger, we'll go right down the line. I believe Mickey. Nate, why don't you tell us your name? Uh, Mickey Eckstein. Mickey Eckstein. Mickey, see the red light on the camera over there? And see yourself out there on the TV? Yeah. You see yourself, huh? Mickey, why don't you tell us how old you are? Uh, Four, right? Hold up those fingers out there so they can see them. There we go. Yeah, that looks real nice, Mickey. Mickey, you got a little boyfriend by any chance? Oh, surely. And what street do you live on, Mickey? Do you know? No, who doesn't? She doesn't know. Ginger, where, why don't you tell us where the street you live on here in town? Fifteenth. On Fifteenth Street, right? Yes. Okay, in case anybody was wondering. Okay, Mickey, and who's our, this right here next to you? Christine. Um, Christine and Christine, you were a winner one day in one of our contests, weren't you? Yeah. Which one was it that you won on? I mm don't -hmm. You can't remember anymore. Did you ever taste one of those ices? Yeah. You like them? Yeah. Okay, well, listen, we're going to have some more contests today, but not you kids that are on our show aren't eligible to win, but maybe this next week you can tune in and win again, huh? Yeah. Okay, and you got a boyfriend by chance? No. No, why don't you tell us how old you are, Christine? Six. Six. And you'll be in kindergarten next year or first grade? First grade. First grade. And where are you going to go to school? Which school here in Jasper? Mm -hmm. You don't know. Probably St. Joseph's, though, huh? Yeah. Okay, Christy. Christy, Mickey, and Ginger so far. All right. We'll go over to the other side. And then the young man, the only male in the crowd besides myself today. Why don't you tell us your name? Joseph Eckstein. Joe. And how old are you, Joe? Eight. Eight. Did you play any baseball this year, Joe? Yeah. What team? Orioles. How'd you guys do this year? Sorry. Oh, okay. What was your season record? Do you remember? Mm. No? No. What position did you play, Joe? Right field. Right field. Did you catch a few pops out there once in a while? Yeah. Hey, that's good. And what kind of batting average did you hit? Do you remember? Pop and got walked sometimes. Oh, is that right? You got a few hits now and then, though, too, didn't yeah. you? Hey, why don't you look out the camera so they can all say Give us a big smile, see? Okay, there he is. All right, let's go on to the other young lady we have with us. And why don't you tell us your name? Rachel Norris. Rachel Norris, right? And Rachel wants you to look straight ahead. See, so mom and all the relatives can see you out there. Rachel, and uh, you're new to our community. You're just visiting, right? Yes. And what, where do you live? I live in Louisville. In Louisville? Oh, that's a real nice town. Do you ever see the Derby? Uh, no, but we're planning to go sometime. You plan to go sometime. Why? Well, I've never been to Derby myself, but a lot of people say it is really nice down there. I know the high school band from Jasper was down there this year and participated in a Derby parade. Did you have a chance to see the Derby parade? Uh, no. Yeah. You haven't seen that. We just I it wasn't down there either, but I did see it on television in Solda. Mm -hmm. And uh, how are you connected with people here? Who are your relatives that you have in Jasper? Well, I don't have any. Well, let's see. Louise and. Summersheim here, Mrs. Summersheim, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. She's my second cousin. Oh, I see. And we came up to visit her from I see. Lodoni. And who else came along with you? My mother and my grandmother. And why don't you just say hi to them out there? I know they're watching in today. 
They are. Okay, fine. So that's our crew today. It was the summer time out there. So we have a real good gang today, and we uh, hope that uh, you'll see some exciting stuff coming up in our program. And we have a little postcard. If you remember, I told you that Jan used to do our, remember Jan used to do our program a long time ago. And Jan sent us a postcard from Tokyo, Japan. And she says, uh, here's what it says in here, and I'll hold a postcard up and read it for you as soon as Chuck. And Chuck, you got a shot on it? Okay. And there you see it. It's a picture of Tokyo at night. It says, it's really great here, uh, especially Tokyo at night. Always something to do. Have seen every temple and shrine around, doing lots of shopping and riding the subways. Peace to all, Jan. So she's sending that to the gang here at TV9. And... Uh, She's always thinking about us a little bit. So we're looking forward to seeing Jan. She should be home in about three weeks or so. And, of course, we'll have her come down and appear on our program and then tell us a little bit about the big trip that she's been on. She's been roughly gone now for about four or five weeks, and I'm sure she is enjoying herself. And she's traveling with her cousin, Sherry Gramosbacher, and her grandmother, Marie Gramosbacher, Mrs. Claude Gramosbacher, that is. So I'm sure they are having a real big time. Okay, the contest time. Now, this is going to be a good one, so we're going to hold it up right here. And this is a little different than what we've been having. This is going to be a word scramble. And what we want you to do is look at this piece of paper that I'm going to hold up in just a few short minutes, and you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. And we want you to arrange these letters into a word that uh, you can make out, you know, a sanctioned word found in the Webster's Dictionary. And as soon as you have that, call 4823653 and uh, give us your name and the word that you have come up with. And the first two people who come up with a, with a word out of these letters will receive free ICs from the PDQ and Jasper. So, Chuck, I'm going to hold it up for you. I think this is... There it is. It's L-O-E-T-D-A-P. That is the letter. Those are the letters, excuse me. L-O-E-T-D-A-P. Rearrange those kids. Write them okay, down. Okay, and the last but not least. My mom and my dad, my grandmother and Aunt Louise. Okay, very fine. All right. So, uh, kids, that's just about all the time. We're at. We did have two winners, though. And the answer, of course, to that, did any of you kids know what the Russian thing was? None of you? Luna 15, if you remember. Luna 15 was uh, the Russian uh, space ops, uh, vehicle that was out there. And two winners were Alan Crodel. And Chuck Meyer, so fellas, you two win two ICs from the PDQ here in Jasper. Now, we're out of time. We're going to have to move on along. So Monday, we have a real good show lined up for you. And I got some real sharp magic tricks I'm going to pull for some of you youngsters. And while some of you kids try to pull this glass trick on your parents tonight, it's quite a dandy, and you really have a lot of fun with it. So until tomorrow, from Uncle Al and the whole gang down here, so long. Excuse me, Monday, that is. Good night. <laughs> Be sure to join us each day, Monday through Friday at 4.30 and again at 7.30 for Hey Kids! Sterling, brewers of mellow Sterling beer present... News Wheel. A wrap-up of today's local news, sports, and weather. Good evening in the headlines tonight. Lieutenant Lytton retiring from Indiana State Police. Holy Family Priest is being transferred. A watch is stolen from Huntingburg store. And baseball tournaments continue to dominate the local sports picture. Those are the headlines of the news. It's Friday, July 25th, 1969. We'll have the details in a moment after this message. Lieutenant Howard B. Lytton, Sr., who has been commander of the Jasper District of the Indiana State Police Post for the past six years, will retire effective next November 1st. The 32-year-old veteran of the State Police will become administrator for the Criminal Justice Planning Agency on September 1st. This is a state agency which dispenses and administers funds made available under the Safe Streets and Crime Control Act. Lieutenant Lytton was named administrator at a meeting of the Criminal Justice Planning Commission to Region 8 held at the Jasper Country Club last July 10th. Twelve of the 14 members of the commission attended the meeting and voted unanimously for the appointment. Among the board members who attended the meeting was Judge Howard A. King of the Dubois Circuit Court. Lytton will be working under Agency Director Robert Brannon of Evansville, a retired FBI agent, seeing to the administration of the funds made available to the program. The 55-year-old policeman attended Indiana University State Police School in 1937 and has attended numerous other schools since, including the Southern Police Institute at the University of Louisville. Lytton specialized in drunkometer, breath photography, and darkroom operation, 
as well as receiving extensive training in firearms instruction. He's also recognized as a qualified instructor in the American Red Cross First Aid School. Lieutenant Litton was commended by FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover for apprehending a bank robber and received a coveted Silver Star Award at the Indiana State Police for extraordinary heroism in 1954. He conducted his last post inspection last May 20th and will begin his new duties as administrator for the Criminal Justice Planning Agency of Region 8 on the 1st of September. Father Walter Renderly, assistant pastor of Holy Family Parish in Jasper since January of 1968, has been reassigned to Vincennes University. Father Renderly will succeed Father Bernard Lutz, who will return to Indiana University as a student as well as a teacher. At Vincennes, Father Renderly will teach philosophy, basic beliefs of the Western world, and ethics. He will also serve as student pastor, offering ecumenical services, and will act as student consular. He will assume his new duties on August 20th. Father Renderly, a native of Vincennes, graduated from St. Meinrich College in 1962 with an A.B. degree in history. He graduated from State University of Innsbruck in 1966 with an STL in Theology of Religion. He also attended classes at Indiana University. He was ordained to the priesthood in March of 1966. In addition to his duties as assistant pastor of Holy Family Parish, Father Renderly gave religious instructions in the parish and worked as rehabilitation chairman for the Mental Health Association. A look at other local news in just a moment after this message. Bill Walton, a mechanic at the Jasper State Police Post, suffered a leg fracture around 9.15 this morning when a car in which he was working started forward and pinned him against a wall. He was removed to Memorial Hospital in an ambulance. Walton was working on the starter solenoid beneath the hood when the engine suddenly started and the car, which was in gear, began to move. His cries for help attracted the maintenance man, Art Snyder, to the scene, and Snyder backed the car away from the wall and released Walton. The Potoka River level stood at 505 feet at 5.05 feet at 8.15 this morning, a decline of six inches since that same time on Thursday. Morris Fritz, who observes the river for the U.S. Geological Society, said he is still not certain if the river's crest has been reached or when it will be. He said this depends on the amount of rainfall received in the Dubois area. A lady's Benrus wristwatch valued at $50 was stolen from Kruger's watch shop at 403 4th Street in Huntingburg at about 11.15 this morning. According to Irvin E. Kruger, owner of the store, a man came into the store and asked to see some ladies' watches. Kruger displayed the watches on the counter, and the man asked to see some necklace displays. The man suddenly made an excuse to leave the store. Upon his departure, Kruger discovered the watch missing. Irvin Kruger told police, city police chief Ron Seibert, that the man was about 5 feet 10 inches tall, heavily built, and wearing a rust or reddish colored trousers. Minor damage was inflicted on the duct work of the Goldcrest Furniture Company in North Chestnut Street in Huntingburg shortly before noon Thursday. Ronnie Ebelair, manager of the plant, which is a subsidiary of Styline Ducraft, said the fire in the plant's blower system apparently was caused by the ignition of sawdust by a warped rip saw, which became overheated. Firemen extinguished the blaze and confined damage to a 10-foot section of duct work. We'll take a look at the local sports picture and the weather forecast in just a moment after this message. Team scheduled to play Thursday night in the Legion baseball section at Tell City went on the road after discovering rain and wet grounds at Tell City and managed to play both games at Rockport last night, although the action was interrupted periodically by rain. In the games played at Rockport, Jasper defeated French Lick 9-5, and Ferdinand eliminated Dale 3-2 in a seven-inning game, agreed to before the game by the two managers. Usually, Legion plays nine innings. After fighting the rain at Tell City, the Jasper French Lick game started late in the evening at Rockport. French Lick jumped out in front early 3-0. Jasper came back and romped home to the 9-5 victory. There were 10 errors in the game. Ricky Wiseman led a nine-hit attack for Jasper with a triple, single, and two RBIs. Barrett, who went the distance on the mound for the win, had two singles and two RBIs, and Lee Bame chipped in with a pair of singles. Jasper will now play Rockport at 8 p.m. tonight in the double elimination tournament. Officials hope to play the game at Tell City. Stan Rue went the distance and helped his own cause with an RBI double as Ferdinand edged Dale 3-2. It was a second loss for Dale, who was eliminated from the tournament. Ferdinand will play again at 12.30 p.m. Saturday. Tonight's action in that double elimination tourney will determine the opponent for Ferdinand in Saturday's game. Well, it appears the weatherman is finally starting to cooperate a bit, and if the rains hold off, as all baseball fans locally are hoping they do, two team league tournaments and the Pony League best of three tourney between Jasper and Tell City will resume this evening.
The Teen League Tournament at Jasper was rained out for the third time this week, Thursday night. The new schedule has Jasper Tigers playing Dubois. That game just got, a, or got underway at 5 o'clock, followed by Jasper Cubs in Oakland City at 7.30. This is a double elimination tourney. The Huntingburg Teen League Tourney is also scheduled for tonight. In the opening game at 6, it's Tell City against Spencer. Huntingburg and Boonville scheduled to play later tonight at 8.15. This is also a double elimination tourney that's scheduled to run through Sunday. The second game of the best of three Pony League playoff between Jasper and Tell City was rained out last night at Tell City. The same two teams are playing tonight at Tell City. If Jasper wins, Jasper will advance to the Pony League District Tournament scheduled to begin tomorrow in Jasper. If Tell City wins, a third game will be necessary before that district tourney can get underway. So you can see this would result in a few problems for the Pony League officials. The weather forecast for Jasper, Huntingburg, and Dubois County calls for fair to partly cloudy through Saturday. Mild and less humid today, becoming warmer and more humid on Saturday. Slight chance of showers late tonight and Saturday. The low tonight near 70, the high Saturday near 90. Precipitation probability is 20% for tonight and 20% again tomorrow. And that's the latest local news, sports, and weather this Friday, July 25th, 1969. This is Jerry Birch thanking you for watching and inviting you to stay tuned now for Cable Talk. Good night. They want so much so fast, so soon. Wouldn't it not rub off on the young people? Is this not a racy world we live in?